Hey folks, um, almost ready. Just uh, setting up a few things here. Gonna gonna go ahead and tweet uh, that the live stream has started and um, see what happens. Hi, Geek Workshop. Welcome. I'm just uh, I'm just tweeting that I'm about to start. Hello, Octo. Hello, CSNG. Nice to see you. Hope everybody's doing well. We'll uh, get started in just a sec. How's everybody doing? It's the weekend, right? So I hope everybody's doing well. Hi, Ghost Dog. Had to wake myself up to catch it today. What time zone are you in? That's interesting. Had to wake yourself up. Well, it's, it's basically the weekend, so maybe you were just taking a nap. <clears throat> okay, so there, I sent a tweet. Maybe some friends will retweet it. Maybe I'll find somebody new. We'll see. Hi, Michael. Um, Still doing my sketch just a little bit here, but I'm just about ready. Yeah. And then, of course, I got that. I'm uh, going to try to draw Namor the Submariner today. The prompt was deep, so made me think of uh, the ocean, and uh, I don't know, just never really tried to draw him before, so I thought it could be kind of a cool challenge. So we'll see how it goes. What are people saying in the chat room? Um, Michael says, missed yesterday because my phone didn't want to internet. That sounds like a hassle. Hello, Keith. Keith Thomas is here. Oh, I need to adjust the setting here. It looks like it's trying to autofocus on my camera. Hi, Shirley. Hello, Marcelo. Uh, ah, Ghost Dogs in Louisiana. All right, that's fair. Um, Central time zone. I used to live in New Orleans for a number of years. I like it, Louisiana. Louisiana's great. Okay, that should be better. So you got my light. All right. Where to start? Probably by getting my brushes and such ready. Um, yeah. Oh, I got to see um, Blade Runner... 2049 today. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought that that was a very well done movie. Uh, not a lot of uh, action or romance. It's just a, a good, good mystery. And uh, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was really well done. So I was glad I finally got out to see that. Um, let's see, Sigamig says, do you think Namor will get adapted into a movie? Um, 
It seems unlikely, doesn't it? They've, Marvel's never really talked about him, so I, I think that his rights might be like tied up with someone else, and they just don't want to. They just don't want to deal with it. But I don't know. Maybe there's just not a lot of interest because you'd think somebody would have attempted something by now with uh, how many characters have had a uh, movie attempts, but um, never really heard anything one way or the other for Namor. I happen to like the character. Uh, I think he's complex. Uh, I prefer it when they go ahead and make him a hero, but that isn't always. Uh, I think it just gives him some depth that he has different priorities than uh, a lot of the other superheroes. He's a king. To be fair, they can probably explore a lot of the same ideas with uh, Black Panther that they could with uh, Namor. <clears throat> My brother told me back in the day that Marvel, Marvel's biggest heroes Okay, back in the day, Marvel's biggest heroes were Namor and the Human Torch. Uh, yeah, they, they were pretty big. Um, they were definitely, uh, well, it wasn't even called Marvel Comics back then. They were known as Timely. And uh, Captain America was in there, too. Uh, those were their sort of biggest heroes in the 40s. Your brother is right. I like sharks. I'm uh, scared to be in the water with them, but um, they're quite beautiful. Uh, I think that they're uh, wonderful creatures. They've got a important purpose, and uh, unfortunately, they're uh, they're overhunted and uh, they need uh, our protection. Let's see. Uh, Mike L says, Namor would be an awesome first Avenger Wonder Woman type movie where it takes place in the past. Agreed. I think that that's, uh, that would be a good take uh, on somebody like Namor, putting him in the, uh, in the 40s maybe. A little more wonder to the idea, but um, who knows? I think there's I think there's a lot you could do with Namor starting him out kind of villainous but like find a measure of redemption. I think that that would be a a pretty interesting character arc to go on. Wouldn't it? Like you start off kind of perceived as the enemy and uh you know, don't do anything too horrible, just dangerous and then uh find out that maybe there is uh, some commonality even though culture and beliefs differ wildly. I think that that would be a really unique take on a, a superhero story. Geek Workshop says, I think Universal owns the Namor movie rights. I've heard that before too, uh, but I've never really heard any confirmation on that, and it does seem odd to me that they've never even tried to develop anything. But who knows? Take a look at uh, questions in the chat room in just a sec. Just blocking out some of the bigger stuff and then I'll uh, take a moment to see what people are saying. That's, yeah, I think the rest I'm going to use a finer brush. Okay. 
CSNG asks, does he count as a Fantastic Four character? No, he shouldn't. Uh, he existed well before them. There's no reason they, they would necessarily tie his rights to Fantastic Four. Um, he should be his own character. Um, so, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, oh, and then Mike is saying at the end of a movie that's set in the past, he gets found uh, as a bum by Human Torch. He, uh, Mike is saying, and he is a mutant. He is a mutant, but that was like sort of like retroactively decided. He wasn't like in, created to be, you know, an X-Men type mutant. So I think, uh, I don't think that he falls within the rights to Fantastic Four or anything. Um, yeah. Namor versus Aquaman. Uh, the thing that no, the theme is not Namor versus Aquaman. It's just I'm drawing Namor because the theme is deep. So uh, let me try to shift this a little. Okay. Um, and honestly, I think it between the two of them that Namor would win. I think he's uh, I think he's stronger, uh, a little more ruthless. Um, and he can fly. That's that's a pretty nice little advantage to have. In a fight. Hmm. What do you think about Locke and Key? Uh, asks Julio. One of my all-time favorite comics. Locke and Key is fantastic. Uh, just, just terrific. Uh, definitely came close to covering Locke and Key for this sort of October's Horror Month theme. Um, ultimately decided not to because, I don't know, just there were other competing interests, but it's one of my personal uh, favorites. Maybe I didn't want to gush too much about something like Lock and Key one week and then Hellboy the next week, just like gushing over stuff. I wanted a little bit of variety, but um, it's definitely something I'd love to talk about at some point. I think it's fantastic. I hope more people discover it. Morgan Moore joins and says, is there a Marvel Universe where Namor is king of it all? And it's a water world Atlantis, and every hero is now water-based. I don't think that's ever been attempted. That's an interesting idea. Michael Wisman says, DC has been beefing up Aquaman over the years. He's on par or sometimes stronger than Superman these days. I didn't know that. Uh, Namor versus Aquaman would be a tough one. Yeah, I guess, I guess if uh, he's been beefed up to that level of strength. I mean, keep in mind that uh, Namor can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with... Uh, you know, Thing, Hulk, uh, Silver Surfer, so his strength level is also, like, pretty much off the charts. But, um, I didn't realize that Aquaman had sort of been built up to be similarly strong. I guess in that case, like, Aquaman's advantage is he can communicate with sea animals telepathically, and Namor's is that he, uh, he can fly. So... He could potentially take the fight out of the water and have an advantage there. But um, Aquaman could have backup underwater. So. Hello, Karen. Karen joins us. Um, wasn't there a Namor movie starring the dad from Step by Step way back in the day? Not that I'm aware of. Patrick Duffy as Namor? Maybe as a joke. I don't, I don't think that that's a, a thing. <clears throat> what are some of the most interesting DC Elseworld stories? Asks Sigamigs. I think Red Sun is up there. I think that's a really good one. Uh, Gotham by Gaslight. Um... The Nail, uh, those are some of the the few, I guess, that I know that I think are pretty well done. But uh, if, if anybody in the uh, chat room has some of their own recommendations, go for it. <clears throat> yeah.
Have you thought about a comic tropes on Alex Toth or Wally Wood? Definitely. Definitely I've thought about it. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of, of both of those guys. Um, and I would say that they are some of my major influences. So yeah, I've definitely thought about it. Haven't really got an angle on, on how I'd approach that yet, but it is something uh, I would enjoy covering. My, my problem is I've got too many ideas. That's, that's my biggest problem with comic tropes. And I can only do so much each week. There's a lot of stuff I'd like to talk about. But those are definitely some creators that I personally admire a great deal. <clears throat> TARDIS writer says, I wonder if Sue Richards would swoon over Aquaman and make Namor jealous. Eh, maybe. Trying to work in using my whole arm for a lot of this stuff instead of just twisting my wrist. Quite tricky. Uh, Geek Workshop asks if I've ever read Spider Man Noir. I haven't. Any good? Um, no, I'm aware it exists. That's about it. The Drowned is a new story about a female Batman killing the Atlanteans of her world and conquering the world with her Dead Sea powers and experiments covering the world in water. Oh, Michael Wisman says that that's a, a good uh, Elseworld story. Don't know about that one. Interesting. Uh, ah, Tardis Rider points out Patrick Duffy did star in A Man from Atlantis TV series, but it wasn't Namor. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, I didn't think he'd ever starred as Namor. I didn't think Namor had ever been adapted into live action. I forgot about that show, uh, Man from Atlantis. That was a thing. Keith Thomas says that he liked the Marvel Noir series. Karen says, uh, recommended, though I'm not sure if the audience here likes to read fanfics. I missed something, I guess. <coughs> yeah, I'm missing something. I think Namor would be good as an animated movie. Sure. Uh... Marcello says, Chris, your Mark Wahlberg impression is on point. Thank you. Ma's recipe, my money, and Donnie's also here. I think we could really have something going here with Warburgers. Hey, everybody. Hey. You want to talk about the Celtics? You guys want to talk about uh, Tom Brady and the Patriots? We could go over to Wahlburgers and talk about it. All the fellas are going to be there. Uh, Scooter, Jim Jam, 
Flip Flop and Jackie? Doodle Nose? We're all going to be there. Everybody from Southie is going to swing by Wahlburgers. Believe it or not, I've actually never really tried to draw sharks, even though uh, they're in here. Uh, I find sharks fascinating. Scary, but wonderful. And only scary because I grew up with Jaws. Like, I'm sure that they're not as dangerous as all that, as long as you know what you're dealing with. But, uh... I don't know what I'm dealing with. <laughs> it's funny to think now because we grew up in a world where Jaws was a massive blockbuster and therefore lots of TV shows and movies have used sharks to imply danger. But there was a time in our past where people weren't generally aware of sharks as a potential danger. I'm specifically thinking of, uh, oh, I can't remember if it was the 1920s or the 1930s. I want to say the 1930s. People were starting to go to beaches as a recreational activity. It was actually not, like, before that, the most popular thing in the world to do as a recreational activity. Uh, so people started going to uh, the Jersey Shore, became very, very popular here in America, somewhere around the 20s or 30s. And there was a series of shark attacks. People didn't know to be scared of them, and news was slower to filter. We've been able to piece this together uh retroactively that there were a series of shark attacks down the shore so probably what was going on was there was a great white that was very very hungry and he started to get tremendously disoriented so listen to this he gets to the Jersey Shore and finds an inlet to a pond and he was so most likely just starving hungry and completely disoriented and insane he swam up a brackish narrow channel and got into a pond where kids went swimming and these kids jumped in and the shark attacked them and one of the kids was killed cut to the kids telling all of their parents oh my god something something ate you know Jimmy or whatever we gotta get back to the pond the whole town organizes a search party they're all along the banks and, uh, and, you know, there's a, like a little rowboat that goes out and they're, they're diving, trying to find what happened to this kid. They don't understand, you know, the story that the kids are saying. They just know that a kid probably drowned and they need to find his body. And one of the town men sees this shark down there and it's maybe even gnawing on this kid. And he doesn't understand the danger of a shark because people didn't understand the danger of a very hungry shark and so he starts hitting it because he thinks it's just basically some sort of a fish and he starts hitting the shark trying to like get the body of the kid the shark attacks this guy and everybody around town is around this pond and they're like losing their minds going like what is happening this guy's getting killed by a shark in front of them and the shark ended up escaping it got back out that channel and back out to sea this is a real story um, I think that there might have been a nonfiction book called Close to Shore, if I'm remembering correctly, but it's all about a shark attack on the Jersey Shore, a series of shark attacks, and people had no idea what to do, do because, you know, they weren't really fishermen. They didn't understand the danger of a hungry shark. They, they just thought of it as a fish. Just like any other fish. So, hope you like that story.
Uh, Mark's, Mark's here, and he says that he hasn't been uh, scared of sharks since Batman invented shark repellent. Sly Fly Guy's here. Johnny Dropkicks <laughs> mentions the SNL Candy Graham. And Julio, uh, I agree with you. Poor sharks. They're beautiful creatures. They are. I talk about, like, you know, how they can be a danger if they're hungry, but that's if you're invading their territory and you're in some really strange circumstances, like you've got a super hungry shark. Um, it's... It's really sad that they're hunted to the point of near extinction, many species. Um, a lot of people will go uh, hunting for sharks um, for, the, for their fins. You can make a soup out of it. Um, and uh, they'll cut off the fin, throw the rest of the shark back into the ocean because it has no value. Without its dorsal fin, it can no longer really swim and it basically just drowns and it's just really really depressing uh, that this is something that's done to sharks regularly Marcelo says a shark attack on Jersey Shore in 2017 it sounds like a sci-fi channel original movie like Sharknado yeah but this one that happened you know not long after the turn of the century was real So that's my shark story. I've read a lot about sharks. I'm not any sort of expert. I'm just saying, like, stories of them fascinate me. Um, the story of the uh, sinking of the USS Indianapolis at the end of World War II is one of the scariest and most depressing shark attack stories ever. Um, USS Indianapolis was, was the naval ship that secretly delivered uh, the components for uh, one of the two bombs that we dropped on Japan to end World War II. Their mission was so secret that no one really knew they were out there. They were sunk by a Japanese U-boat on their way home. And so these men were out at sea, the survivors of the sinking, getting picked off by sharks for... I think it was like two weeks. They were just starving to death and boiling in the sun and getting eaten by sharks. Um, quite a sad story. Uh, James Berry Jr. says, Sweet drawing, is that Namor? It is. It is. Or at least that's it's my, it's my attempt at Namor. Hopefully, uh, it's identifiable as Namor by the time I'm done. And I'm also trying to draw some hammerhead sharks uh, along with it. Just uh, to go with something slightly unique. I feel like uh, you don't see hammerhead sharks as often as other uh, types of sharks. Maybe I'm wrong. So, today is my first day uh, unemployed. Uh, there were mass layoffs at my office yesterday. 
<clears throat> None of us were expecting that. We didn't realize that the uh, company was in that kind of trouble, and they laid a third of us off with budget cuts. I was part of that group, and I am now unemployed. So I'm a little depressed, but uh, trying to obviously keep busy, trying not to uh, neglect what I've committed to. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that's what I'm dealing with. James uh, get, pays me some compliments on the Hammerhead Sharks. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Johnny, for the uh, sympathy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's rough. Was not expecting it. I really like the people I worked with. Um, the uh, vice president even came and said, you know, that he thought uh, I was fantastic and he was sorry to lose me, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it's nice to hear from somebody that high. It's at the same time, really all I want is a job. Oh well, hopefully I find something better. <clears throat> Attitude Era Gaming says, what is your favorite type of shark? Uh... Hmm. I don't know, I guess the Great White, just because it's the uh, overall most dangerous, maybe, potentially, so has a lot of dramatic potential, but I also feel for it because it's being hunted to near extinction, and uh, uh, it has its place, so... Yeah, I kind of feel for it, too. Let's see. Um, thank you for the sympathy, Shirley. Appreciate it. Uh, I think I missed something here. Um, oh, Justin Mack joins us. Thank you. Uh, it's going well. Thank you. <clears throat> Domingo Ramos says, That's my boy, Spanky Mack. Okay. <laughs> Uh, appreciate all the sympathy. Lots of people saying some nice things. Uh, one shark was murdered in order for you to eat that. Oh, that's not a happy shark story. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Sharks are no laughing matter. Well, they sort of aren't, are they? I mean, they're, they, they, you know, they're, they're the apex predator of their environment. So they're, they're not really a, uh, a laughing matter and yet humanity is hunting sharks way past what they can uh, deal with so we have to protect them uh, they're, they're really not obviously a big day-to-day -day threat <laughs> most of us do not need to live our lives afraid of sharks so uh, yeah, it, it, it's a very specific set of uh, events that need to occur for you to be in danger from a shark. Uh, and since I'm not a professional surfer, I don't have to worry about them. And I figure if people are still willing to go out surfing regularly, then it's probably not a huge threat. I have to come back to this area to draw the details on Namor's 
bathing suit, but first I want to try to lay in some uh, some of the thick shadows I've uh, decided to to use. We'll see how that goes. Ah, and apparently it's Nintendo's birthday, so happy birthday. Miller says, did you check out Mr. Miracle or Black Bolt that I recommended at the beginning of the month? I, I haven't, uh, Milos. I've, I've just been way too busy. I haven't read a lot of uh, new comics lately, but everybody's recommending Tom King. So uh, apparently I really need to get on that. People are just saying he's a really great writer. And so that's kind of exciting. I would like to see uh, what the, the hubbub is about. So I, uh, I will take your words to heart. Uh, also, more people die from thunder strikes than sharks. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, sharks, we don't live in the ocean. They're not an ongoing threat to us in any way. And they, so first, we're not really in their environment. And second, uh, even when we are, they, they mostly leave people alone. They really only uh, attack if provoked or they're completely disoriented because they for some reason haven't like eaten or they're injured so that yeah it they're not a threat really not not really they're just doing their thing they've got their place uh, Marcelo says, the Hellboy comic tropes was great. Very fitting for Halloween. Mignola is a god. <laughs> yeah, that's true. CSNG uh, links to um, video of divers petting sharks like dogs. Yeah, they're, they're not dingy. Orca is the best shark movie, even though an orca is not a shark, but a whale. Yeah, you know what? Orcas, uh, as I understand it, have never been documented as attacking any human being in the wild. The only time an orca has attacked a person are the instances at like the, those uh, those like water zoos for those water theme parks and stuff where uh, they're just they go mad because they're in such a tight confine of an environment they hate it they they it, it, it drives them mad um, poor things my understanding is in, if you come across a killer whale, an orca, in, uh, in the open sea, you're in pretty much zero danger. Um, they're supposed to be very smart and very friendly from what I've, uh, what I've read. I would love to uh, see an orca up close. I think that would be amazing. <clears throat> Everybody's wishing Nintendo a happy birthday. <laughs> uh, let's see, David Smith is, is there, and he wishes them a uh, happy birthday. Ro Roma Ticklin's here. Sigamigs, Johnny Dropkicks. <laughs> Johnny Dropkicks says, That damn orca burnt down that whole fishing village. Well, they might be smart enough to do that, but I don't think that there's been a documented case of... Uh, an orca setting fire to anything. I think that he might be having fun with us. I'm realizing that um, I jump around a lot when I'm uh, like shading things in. Um, some of it is just to keep myself sort of interested, jumping around the uh, the artboard, and some of it is um, just sort of making sure that I don't um, maybe make one region darker than I mean to or anything. Um, I haven't done everything perfectly during Inktober to, to what's in my head. Um, usually in my head, I will try to have sort of a, a dark foreground 
and background and a light middle ground or vice versa so that you can like have uh, some some distinction between the layers now this I'm really just doing is like a quick sketch but I think if I were to approach this I would probably try to make Namor dark because he's in the foreground which I sort of am the, the the big sharks maybe not too too dark and then fill in the background with lots of silhouettes of even more sharks something like that to just sort of um, add some some depth to, to the proceedings hopefully that makes sense let's see uh, James asks do you or have you ever drawn for any comic books I haven't drawn for like Marvel or DC uh, if that's what you're asking but if you're asking if I've done comics like that have, that I've been paid for and that have been published and are in bookstores then the answer is definitely yes um, I've worked on uh, let's see uh, these are books that you could find for instance in a Barnes and Nobles or at a um, Amazon uh, there's these are these are all anthologies uh, trickster Colonial Comics Volume 1, Colonial Comics Volume 2. Uh, those are all books that I've uh, relatively recently uh, done, done pages for. Um, those are all for uh, Fulcrum Publishing. And so a little bit more in the educational comics realm, I guess you'd call it. <clears throat> so, um, but yeah, I've done a little. And I've done a lot of self-published and sort of independent uh, things, but um, that's nothing you would have like you know come across anywhere. Um, I've got a lot of friends that I've uh, done that kind of stuff with. Um, maybe uh, some of you out there read Valiant Comics. Uh, there's a writer on several of their titles uh, named Rafer Roberts. Uh, that's a buddy of mine, and I've uh, worked on some of his self-published comics, for instance. So, yeah, I'm not a, a big name or anything like that, obviously. But I've uh, done a little bit of work in comics in my own world. It's, uh, yeah, it might not be exciting, but it, it pays, so I guess that sort of counts. Hopefully that answers your question. Be back with everybody in just a sec. Um, Brendan Sellers joins us and says, since it's October, I picked up Afterlife with Archie. That series is perfect for getting you in the Halloween spirit. The art and the coloring inspire me to keep working on my own horror comics. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I agree. It's uh, it's better than you might expect, uh, depending on how much you know about Archie and how you feel about Archie. But they they did a really good job with that. Afterlife with Archie. Very cool comic. Not really even too tongue-in-cheek, if you ask me. I mean, it's a pretty straight-up horror comic. It just uh, happens to use the characters from Archie. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Domingo says, how much YouTube paying you for this? Like, you're really putting a lot of time into this drawing for nothing. Oh, pff, YouTube, like, pennies. Like, I don't know, a dollar. Maybe, maybe, not even. You need to have a lot of views to, to make anything at YouTube. And here's what they do with a lot of my live streams. They'll demonetize it for, the, for about 24 hours. It probably goes through some sort of review. It may be done by you know, mechanical bots or anything, um, but it's demonetized for about 24 hours after it gets archived. It means I can't make any money on it. Like, people can watch it, 
but I can't make money. That first 24 hours is when you're going to get most of your views. So, no, I'm making nothing on this. This is purely uh, a personal exercise. I figured if I live streamed it that that would sort of keep me honest. You know, I was like, okay, I'm doing it for myself, but I told people that I would do it. Like, I told people I'd be here, and I don't want to let those people down. So it just sort of keeps me accountable. Um, that's why I'm live streaming it more than anything else, is just to keep myself accountable so that I keep doing this, that I don't give up, and hopefully uh, it leads to some improvement. <clears throat> Mike L. says, we were talking the other day about my idea for a graphic novel. As an artist, how much would a fair commission be? Is it by page, by issue? Uh, it could be... To, to answer you in the broadest terms, whatever you and the artist agree on. But if you're going to develop this idea, you've got two ways you could do it. You could self-publish it. That means you have to pay the artist, you know, yourself, either the beginning or the end, however you guys decide is fair. I would recommend paying them up front if you truly believe in your idea. Or you could pitch it to, to publishers in which case you'd probably only need to um, have the artist draw maybe six consecutive pages, something like that, uh, just to give the publisher an idea of what it will look like. So it really depends, you know, on, on how much you believe in the idea and also, you know, like what your finances are, etc. Uh, if you pay someone a page rate, I would say if you can get somebody that's professional level, not just starting out, well, you know, it could be like they haven't done much, like, you know, they've just done a couple self-published issues for, for other people. There's plenty of new artists all the time. But anyway, I think uh, if, they're, if they're talented, then, then you might want to think about somewhere between 100 to 150 for a page rate per page. And when you consider it, like, for five or six pages, that really isn't that that much of an investment. It's a lot, but if you believe in this idea, you know, that, that's just the, the upfront costs of getting it started. And then you can probably make that back in profit and maybe even own your idea and you can do other things with it. So, uh, yeah. Those are some of my thoughts on it. Uh, let's see. Brendan Sellers says, I love Riverdale the same way I love McDonald's sometimes. Yeah, it's trash, but it's like fast food I can't get enough of. I feel the same way about a lot of uh, CW shows. Like, I don't even know if I'd call it trash, but I do know what you mean. Like, it's sort of disposable entertainment. It's not always the deepest. But that doesn't mean that it's not enjoyable in the right circumstances. So, uh, yeah, I, I sort of feel the same way as you guys. Uh, Mark says, would it help you out, even if only in a small way, to wait 24 hours to watch your streams if we miss them live? Not really. Uh, that that's a kind thought, but like, I'm no matter what. Like, I'm really not making much off of this. Like, there there just isn't a big enough audience. If there were hundreds of thousands, then maybe I'm making a little bit of money. But we're talking more like a couple hundred right now. I mean, maybe that'll grow over time. But basically, don't worry about it. Like, this is not really a way to make money. On YouTube um, that said you know it might grow me an audience you know the fact that I'm sort of putting out more content and uh, and all uh, that, that that's you know a potential advantage that I may uh, reap the benefit of long term so um, I don't think that this is like valueless uh, or I wouldn't be doing it, but um, 
yeah, it's also not something that's going to make a lot of money. What? Oh, I'm not using the right brush. Darn it. Uh, Ghost Dog says you're going to blow up. Well, who knows, but uh, even if I don't, I hope you'll uh, still stick around for the for the show. Whether I've blown up or not. So I might not. Miller says, I like it better when channels are kind of small, way better community. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Um, it's true. I mean, if I, if for some reason I had, you know, hundreds of thousands of viewers, then we wouldn't all be able to interact the same way. There's just no way I could keep track of uh, what was being said with that level of audience. So, you know, for now, uh, let, let's let's definitely enjoy the fact that we can all talk to one another, and uh, it's it's kind of nice. Anyone uh, doing anything fun for the weekend? I'm uh, gonna go see a friend, a local friend, uh, tomorrow. Um, he's doing a, uh, like a 24 hour, uh, something or other playing, playing video games to, um, to raise money for charity. Like he got donors and stuff and he's going to play all sorts of video games and board games. And I, uh, agreed to play some Dungeons and Dragons tomorrow with him and some other guys. So, uh, not in a position since I just got laid off to really donate uh, to him, unfortunately, but I can at least sort of be there as moral support, I hope. I wish I could have uh, done more. But anyway, I thought that was a fun idea uh, that there's an organization out there that sort of makes this happen. Playing games for charity. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Marcelo says that uh, you guys are all an awesome fan base. It's true. You guys are fantastic. Uh, let's see. Geek Workshop says, any DC comic book recommendations? Uh, well, you know what? I'm not really reading um, much of anything regularly, so I, I don't have a lot. But I will say that everybody keeps telling me that the um, Batman and Mr. Miracle comics written by Tom King are fantastic. Everybody's saying that. Um, so that's something that I plan to check out uh, the next time I go to the comic book store. I'm going to look for some uh, some books written by Tom King because just so many people keep saying they they, they really love his work that I'm like, all right, I I, I don't want to I don't want to sleep on this. Let's see what it is. Uh, Brendan Sellers says the new Batman White Knight miniseries is worth a read. Uh, I, I, yeah, I haven't read that yet, but I adore Sean Gordon Murphy's artwork, so I probably will pick it up for, for, you know, just the artwork alone at some point. So I'm sure that that will be really good. I think, yeah, Sean Gordon Murphy's just one of my absolute favorites. I don't, he's, he's masterful. He's, he's the new hotness. <laughs> uh, 
Did anybody else here ever read um, the book that he did with Grant Morrison? And I'm trying to remember the title, but it was all about a diabetic boy like passing out all alone in his home going for his insulin and he starts hallucinating like going on this massive adventure with all of his toys and favorite like fantasy characters uh it's it's pretty dope pretty good pretty 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 good This reminds me of the Cinemassacre's Monster Madness way back in the beginning. Awesome community. Yeah, but that was already, like, he already had a much bigger audience than I may ever have at that point. We'll see. Anybody discover any good horror movies for the season? Are you going to keep doing live streams after October? You totally should. This is the coolest one I've been a part of. Don't have many friends who are into comics like I am. Till now. Um. Uh. Maybe. I, I, I really do enjoy uh, doing these live streams and, and talking to everybody. But I don't think I could do a daily live stream right now. I mean... When I have a job, it I mean, that's most of my day right there, you know? So, and then to make comic tropes, which uh, is kind of like, you know, the overall point of, of, of being on YouTube right now for me, um, that takes also quite a bit of time to, to put together. So, you know, I'm sort of like backing into like, okay, so how much time do I have left in the day? Um, and, and what brings me the value for that? So I'm sort of like almost doing this sort of economics formula in my head of like, well, what do I get out of it and what do I have to give? Um, to cut it all uh, a lot shorter, uh, I might do something more like a weekly stream um, because I don't know if I have time to commit to a daily uh, activity, really. I, I just don't, like, you know, this is like, there's an end in sight when I started doing it this way. Um, I'm doing it for a specific amount of time, like a specific goal. So... Um, what I'm thinking right now is I might try to do more like a uh, one once a week stream. Um, I'm not sure if I could commit right now to doing more than that. Uh, people are talking about horror movies a little bit about what they found. Creep Show, Creep Show Two. Yep. Uh, Jaw Seventeen. Haven't seen that one. Mark liked Tusk. Personally, I didn't care for uh, Kevin Smith's latest movies. Uh, Tusk was okay. I could I could watch that. It took three times to sit down before I finally was able to get invested enough, but um, I couldn't get through his next one. I'm trying to remember what it was called. It was the one starring 
uh, his daughter and Johnny Depp's daughter. Uh, oh, I did not care for that one. Yeah, creep show movies are uh, good. I, I I like anthologies. Um, not to say that all anthologies are good. I'm just saying that there have. It's a format that in general I do like. I like a little bit of variety. Um, I like the trick or treat um, Halloween anthology. I like um, VHS and VHS two are are two good um, anthology horror movies. Uh, Creep Show is a blast. Can't really get into uh, the Twilight Zone movie one. It, it's just there's too much real life sadness involved in that to really enjoy. Um, never, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't read up on it. It's too depressing. Oh, Mike's taking off. All right, see you, Mike. Um. Do you have Twitter? I want to send you my Inktober drawing. Yeah, it's at Chris Piers, P-I-E-R-S, Chris Piers. I, uh, at some point, maybe I'll make one for the show. I just, there hasn't really been that much uh, demand yet. Uh, so far, I don't have anything like that. All right, I missed some things. Sorry. Uh, yoga hosers, Mark says. Yeah, that 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 movie. I, I tried to watch a bunch of times. I, I and eventually I was like, oh, why am I trying to do this to myself? It's it's not for me. Uh, am I talking about the helicopter incident on set? Asks Sigamix. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Just so depressing, so avoidable, and. Uh, yeah, just, like, might be, in a way, the worst Hollywood accident of all time, you know, to, to kill an actor and two kids, um, ruined careers, ugh, just so depressing. Marcelo Salinas says, Evil Dead series is the shiznit. Uh, yeah, yeah, Evil Dead, come on. Anything Evil Dead I love. Even the one that was like the uh, remake was actually like really, really good. Um, I like the series. I love the original movies. Evil Dead 2 is probably my overall favorite. Uh, 
I like it quite a bit. It's pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, ghost dog. I'm talking about the Twilight Zone accident. <laughs> Let's see. Mark says, I just find the idea of being drugged and having your limbs amputated really terrifying. I don't particularly like Kevin Smith movies, but I like Kevin Smith. Seems like a good egg. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's totally fair. I, I, and I pretty much feel the same way. Um, I, and I went to see him uh, speak live... Uh, at least once, maybe maybe more than that. Like, a, but outside of a comic convention, I, I did go to see him once, and he's a funny storyteller. I, th I think he really is. Um, I think I think he should honestly just sort of be doing TV directing right now because his movie ideas I don't really care for. But I mean, if he can get them funded and there is an audience, I guess. I'm not telling him not to do that. Like, if you can make a living doing what you want to do, go for it. I'm just saying that they're not really for me. Um, Marcelo says, I think the Deadpool 2 set incident was also sad because they were supposed to film a comedy while still facing the tragedy of a death on set. Um, you know what? Like, yes, anytime somebody dies for, you know, an entertainment project like a movie, it's, it's super sad. No question. Um, I, I think the distinction I make with uh, the Twilight Zone movie accident being extra sad is it didn't involve stunt people. Uh, at least a stunt person is, to a degree, aware that there's risk. That's I, I don't think that they expect to die. I don't think that they should ever have that expectation. It's it's a tragedy when they're lost, but it's an extra tragedy when you know you've got actors and kids that really have no expectation of being in harm's way, and the director is sort of like not really being that careful and he put them in harm's way and killed them in an especially gruesome way uh, I think that that's a that's a little more of a tragedy because at least the stunt person understands that there's a measure of danger uh, but you know it's always a tragedy uh, CSNG says get out is a thriller horror movie it's very good it is very good it, it's really interesting it's yeah uh, Karen says, did you like the new Stephen King's It adaptation? I liked it quite a bit. I wouldn't say that I personally was uh, uh, terrified by it, um, but it was really well done. Like, I liked those kids. I thought that they were really interesting and good actors, and I thought that the movie just sort of moved. It had something to say. Yeah, overall, I, I really liked it. Keith Thomas says, I'm inking with you, a well in a field of trees. Oh, that sounds awesome. Is it like just uh, sort of pretty or are you doing something kind of like, um, I don't know, uh, like, you know, the well in, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, the, the ring? Is it sort of scary? Or... Just curious. 
but I'm glad that uh, others are doing art, like that we can all do art together. I love things like um, drink and draws or life drawing, like, you know, Dr. Sketchies, where you get to sort of just draw in a room with a bunch of other artists. And, you know, you're not like necessarily looking and comparing each other's. You're just all hanging out doing art. Like uh, to me, that's so much fun. I love doing that stuff. Just love it. I love it. So that's really nice to hear that there are several other people out there that are uh, drawing at the same time. You know what is weird is when people like maybe see you drawing or, or something like that and they go, oh, I wish I was creative. I wish I was an artist. And it's like, why ain't nobody stopping you? Like, okay, if you're going to say, I'm just not a good artist. Okay, you know what? Like, maybe right now you're not. I think, first of all, you could be. But okay, fa fair. You, you, you don't think you're a good, like, you know, uh, illustrator. But there are, like, there's so many ways to be artistic. Like, I'm, I'm sure that there are people out there that are fantastic cooks. And that's, to me, a type of art. Or maybe you just happen to, like, keep your lawn looking gorgeous with, like, you know, beautiful flowers and, and, and a well-manicured lawn. Well, that's a type of art to me. Um, I mean, the, the real artists, of course, are uh, those that work at Subway, like the, those sandwich artists. But um, <laughs> I'm just saying that there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can be an artist, and it doesn't all have to involve you know, a pencil and ink. Um, that's, that's what I think. So I always find that odd when someone's like, oh, I wish I, I wish I was an artist. I'm like, I'm sure you are an artist in some way that you're just not acknowledging. But you probably are an artist of some sort. Basically, any, any type of sort of creativity in any field is art. Because I think art is just about expression. It, it, it's just meant to elicit a response from somebody else. So there's a lot of different ways to do that, and I would say that that counts as art. That's, that's my thought on it. Uh, Marcelo says, Shining is a near-perfect movie, but not a great adaptation. Um, yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I'm a massive fan of Stanley Kubrick. I also enjoy quite a bit of Stephen King. It's not a very good adaptation, but whatever. It, it took that idea and went in its own direction and... Personally, I like that more. I like what Stanley Kubrick did more. It's really well done. Um, so, I love The Shining. I think that Jaws is also uh, pretty close to perfect. Um, yeah, so, that's another good one. You know what I should have done for deep, if I was thinking of underwater stuff, uh, I should have done something based on Rick Remender's Low, because that is an awesome sci-fi book set uh, underwater. It's really, really cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, now I'm thinking of it and wishing I had like thought to uh, approach that kind of an idea. 
Oh well, it's fine. I just uh, would have loved to spread that uh, that knowledge out to to more people. A lot of people know about Namor. They they probably don't know about how good Low is. Talk about a comic that deals with some very real emotions that a lot of us can relate to, and yet has like utterly unique sci-fi ideas that I feel like haven't been explored all that much. Wow. It's a good. Well, I'm having fun on this one. I'm uh, fairly happy with how it's coming together. I think I'm starting to get a little more consistent with how I ink which is definitely one of my personal goals <clears throat> with this project. Trying to make sure that I feather things in a uniform manner at least. And then I can work on improving that. But first I need to go for some consistency. So uh, getting there. Slowly but surely. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Geek Workshop says you got to see Jaws in theaters for the 4th of July. That's the perfect time of year to see it. That's awesome. Sigamig says, have I read Tokyo Ghost by Remender and Murphy? Absolutely. I'm a huge Sean Gordon Murphy fan. I'm a huge Rick Remender fan. Had to see their collaboration. Don't necessarily, I can't necessarily say that it's the best thing that either one of them did, but it is very interesting. It's beautiful to look at. It's it's great. Like, I definitely would still recommend it to, to people. Like, I'm, it's, it's unique because it could be their favorite thing, even if it's not my personal favorite out of the, those creators. Uh, yeah. yeah, I liked it. A lot of energy, a lot of, a lot of creativity there. Just know that I, I could be in the running for Rick Remender's biggest fan, so t take take it with a pinch of salt, but yeah, I think pretty much everything he's done is interesting. I missed a few things. Ghost Dog says, a great movie I recommend on Netflix is called Frank. It's about a guy with no talent trying to leech off a guy with talent. It poses many questions on what makes a person talented. That does sound interesting. Thanks for the recommendation. I'll, uh, I'll look for it. Frank, huh? Okay. Um, for some reason, Johnny Dropkicks is posting paranormal in all upper cases. Hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. Milos says, good question. Any ghost stories, Skunk? I'm not quite sure whether you're asking if I know of any good ghost stories or if I personally have any good ghost stories. Uh, I, I don't have any good ghost stories myself. What, what are some good ghost stories? That's a, mm, that's a tough one. Let me think. Like, What's a good ghost story? Generally, I don't find ghosts that scary, but, um, hmm, let me think. What's a good ghost story? Um, what, I think that there was a movie with Nicole Kidman, and it might have been called The Others. Uh, that was a good ghost story, I guess. Yeah. Marcelo says, we want you to tell us your paranormal experiences. Oh, uh, I'm going to break your hearts then, because I, I, I'm a very uh, skeptical person about uh, paranormal uh, activity and stuff like that. I I feel like there's just not really any, any solid evidence for, for any of it. Um, but I have two stories that I can't explain. So I'll tell you that, and you can tell me if they were, uh, paranormal experiences. 
So for the first one, um, I have a witness. Uh, Chrissy, my fiance, and I were driving out to Kentucky from Virginia for uh, a friend's wedding. And it was uh, late at night. And we're driving through like a highway uh, in among cornfields. And up in the air, we see a light, very much like an airplane. Except the light is doing weird things. It's like going close and far and left and right every once in a while, and then it'll just sort of hover. And we're just, we're the only ones like out in this, high, you know, highway. It's pitch black. You can see tons of stars because there's just no light pollution. There's no, there's no trees nearby. It's very flat, you know. We're just driving along, driving along, and we're like, what is that? And we just watched it, like, you know, for quite a while as we, as we drove. And we never could figure out what we were seeing. I think that some people might, I mean, technically that's a UFO, right? It's unidentified. It's an unidentified flying object. I don't know what it could have been. I've tried to think about that for, for quite a while. And uh, now I can't really, you know, it's been long enough that I can't recall any additional details. Um, we tried to think of what it could have been, but, but we never came up with anything. So that's one thing. That's one story where, where something strange was happening. Sigamig says aliens. It was aliens. Uh, meteor or solar flare. Couldn't have been one of those things because it would, um, it would get larger and smaller and go left to right. It, wouldn't, it wasn't just moving in a straight arc. And it was over the course of several minutes. It wasn't like, you know, like a, a 15 or 20 second thing. So... Uh, yeah, that was a stumper. That that one still is a stumper. I'm I'm not really sure what what that could have been. Like there there was no clouds in the sky, you know, so it wasn't like something reflecting off of the clouds. Um, boy, I am yeah. I don't know. I really don't. The second weird thing. I'm starting to forget the details, but my grandfather had passed away about a week before, and I had a strange dream. I had a dream that he simply came to, to, to meet me and talk with me. I was pretty close with my grandfather. He, this is on my dad's side. He was, uh, he was a great guy. And I'm talking to him, and, and he's like, you know, like, oh, Chris, you know, I just want you to, to know that I'm proud of you, and I love you, and this and that. And I'm going like, uh, and I sort of like, in the dream, I'm crying. He's like, why are you sad? And I'm like, uh, because I know this is a dream. I know that I'm dreaming. And he goes, no, I'm really here. I'm really talking to you. I was like, I, I, it, it, it just can't be. I know that I'm having a dream. I frequently know that I'm having a dream, and I can control them pretty well. It's just how I dream. Anyway, um, he goes, I'll tell you something that I never told you while I was alive, and you can check it. And I was like, okay. And it was like, he goes like, um, what was it? It was something like, my father had a brother. I had an uncle. This is my grandfather telling me this. I'm like, had a brother. You had an uncle. And I'd never heard that. That that's true. Like as far as I knew, he was uh Yeah, it just just that was new. So I go to my dad and I'm like, so this is my dream. It's pretty weird, you know, like get ready. And and I was like, but but you know, did he? And my dad had to think about it and he goes, Well, wait a minute, like, you know, maybe he did. And he had to like sort of like go in like look at some family records and, and, and eventually goes like, yeah, I guess, I guess he actually did. Like your, your, your grandfather had an uncle and I guess the family just lost touch with him or something like that. It's kind of weird. That's it. That's the whole thing. Like, you know, it, it wasn't like he told me 
this is the guy's name and he lives here or something like that. Just kind of weird, you know, like I dreamt half of a detail almost because I don't really have anything firm, but it, it was kind of a weird dream to have. Like I, it, it was weird because it felt, it felt very real. Like I was talking to someone. It, it just felt real. Um, but it, you know, kind of a nice dream. It was probably just my mind giving myself some closure. Just sort of coming up with a random thing that happened to be true, but it was a real dream. Uh, talked to my dad about it like that next morning, and uh, so I remember that. It's just strange. But that's about it. Uh, let's see. I missed a few things. Uh, Milos says, I posted the same thing before in the chat. My granddad came to me in a dream, too. That it? Yeah. Huh. I mean, for me, I, I just sort of accepted that that was my mind sort of saying goodbye. Because cause here's the thing. Like, my grandfather was, um, he was pretty old. He had Alzheimer's. Uh, and he had just moved into a nursing home. For the longest time, we had home health care, and we visited him all the time. And, but he had just fairly recently moved into a nursing home, and he wasn't doing well. You know, he got sick. And uh, I lived uh, in D.C. He was uh, up in Massachusetts, and I got the call. Your, your grandfather's dying. Got on the first flight I could. Uh, and, you know, my family picked me up, and we're, we're, we're kind of racing to, to get to the nursing home to, to be able to say goodbye. And unfortunately, uh, we, we were about, like, 15 minutes short. They called us, and we're like, we're sorry. You know, he passed away. So that was kind of sad, but it was like, we were so close. So I think, you know, I was so close to, to having that moment of closure of being able to say goodbye, but but didn't quite get it, that I think that my mind invented a dream, like a nice dream, where I could emotionally sort of get that closure, because it was like just nice. It was just my grandfather talking to me, and it was, so that's what I think that is. I don't think that was really a, a visit by a ghost, but uh, like I say, I'm a boring, skeptical guy that uh, looks for uh, a scientific explanation where possible. That that's that's my default. Now I love stories. I mean, I think you guys can tell. Like I love all sorts of stories. I love supernatural stories. I love stories about sci-fi and aliens and stuff. I just personally don't really believe that stuff. Um, I don't, I'm not judging anyone that does. I just, I just don't. But uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so there's a little bit about me. Uh, Aliens or Noob says, oh, I got back into the stream at a bad time. No, you didn't. Welcome. My grandpa died in June. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's tough. I, uh, I don't have any of my grandparents with me anymore, and, uh, and I miss them. I miss them all. Um, but that, that's hard. Uh, all I can say is if you can remember them, that they're still sort of here. That, that's how people stay with us is we remember them. And maybe we uh, put them in our stories or something like that from time to time, right? But, um, but it's hard. It's, it's definitely hard to uh, lose a family member. Unfortunately, that's uh, in a time in my life where that's happened plenty. Not fun. Sorry to get so serious. Let's uh, let's let it go. Johnny Dropkicks wants me to give the sharks mean-looking eyebrows. Sure. No, oh, they're so angry. <laughs> If I was, like, drawing this digitally, I would have just gone for it. That would have been a blast. But I kind of don't want to do that to my drawing. I, I hope you understand. I hope you can allow that. <laughs> Mean-looking eyebrows. Man, I used to love, like, so, at a certain point... I got tired of reading 
the uh, Sunday comics in a newspaper for like just you know enjoying them for what they were and I just started to like to take a pen and try to change them as much as possible but still sort of make it look like it came out that way like like make their eyebrows look angry but like in a way that that artist might have drawn it add extra word balloons if there was a white background that was fun <laughs> let's see Ghost Dog says, my grandfather had a brain aneurysm, but survived, fortunately. He still calls me every few weeks. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. That's really awesome. Milos says, uh, oh, no, wait, I've lost this thread. Like, there, there's a long thread, and I don't understand what people are talking about. Geek Workshop said that he lost his grandpa on Christmas. He died in his sleep, at least. No pain. Yeah, um... Three of my grandparents died in their sleep, so I'm grateful for that. Um, yeah. Sometimes it feels like that's the most we can hope for, you know? It's, uh, it's crazy. I'm close to being done with this, uh, folks. I'm just going to figure out exactly where I'm going to place Namor's eye here. Yeah. I think that'll do. Okay. Um, uh, just about done. This has been an uh, interesting one. I know I talked about like some serious stuff. Thanks for bearing with me. I wasn't trying to uh, traumatize anybody. But um. Yeah. I'm uh I'm overall fairly happy with this one. I feel like uh came pretty close to to what I what I hoped for. You know, there's a few mistakes here and there or a few areas where the details aren't consistent. I, I don't think that the face is fantastic, unfortunately. It's too bad. Um, detail on these is awful. It just doesn't look right to me, but I really don't know how to do that better. Um, just don't know. Hopefully over time I do learn what what to do differently. But, uh, yeah, so the word for this was deep, and that made me think of Namor the Submariner. Let me see if I've got this centered. Yeah, more or less. Move that up there a little. Uh, probably could use a good colorist to uh, make it look better. <laughs> Let's see, what are people saying? I'm about to take off. Uh, <clears throat> okay, people are talking about all sorts of conspiracies and stuff. Interesting. <clears throat> anyway, uh, it was fun talking to everybody tonight. I'm glad that you're able to have conversations with each other that I do not need to uh, participate in. That makes me feel good that... that We've got some like-minded individuals uh, able to have some interesting conversations, even when I get lost in drawing weird details and stuff. So that's 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 good. Got a little bit of a community going here. Um, yeah. Well, I hope everybody has a great weekend. If I don't see you. Uh, you know, Saturday or Sunday. I, I, there's a possibility I could be a little late tomorrow. I'm, I'm not sure, or maybe early. I guess, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna aim for the keeping things at the same time whenever I can. So that's my goal. That's my goal. Um, appreciate everybody stopping in, asking questions, 
Uh, again, I've got a Twitter at Chris Piers, P I E R S. So just tag me there if you want to like show me something or other. And uh, yeah, cool. You know, I need to get. I'll probably get like some sort of a little little placard that I can put up here, put on the uh, the screen with like social media links. All right. Good night, all. Good night. Thanks, folks. Appreciate talking to you. You're the best.